The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented, and when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Holy and gracious God, I speak in your name and in your presence, asking that my words would be pleasing to you, guided by your Spirit, and that the hearts and minds of your people would be open to you. Through Christ our Lord, I pray. Amen. This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. This morning is the second Sunday of Epiphany. And we have this moment of the manifestation of the divine nature of Jesus, the manifestation of His glory. I remind you that last week, we began with celebrating the Feast of the Epiphany and the story of the Magi. And, and it begs careful pondering. Jesus' baptism, this moment of glory, and and the story of the Magi, we need to remember that God is always present everywhere and everyone. There is no place that God is not present. And for us, there are these moments in which that presence becomes opened or disclosed to us, revealed to us. And that's what the word epiphany means. It means revealed. It means manifested. The light has come into the world, but it's not the light that we see with our eyes. It's the light from whom all light comes. And so, these magi from the east, just outside our story, we don't know from where, just from the east, they're, they're magicians. Magi means magicians. They're astrologers, for Pete's sake. And they discern the birth of the king of the Jews. They discern that in the stars. It's our story's way of saying God is present even to the people out there. God is present in the stars. And that, that was revealed to them. And, and last week we, we had that great excerpt from Paul's letter to the church in Ephesus in which St. Paul is writing to a church that is famous for their faith and their love and their hope. And in, even in, among those people, he, he writes, I pray that your eyes would become opened more and more. I pray that the eyes of your heart would be opened more and more and more. I pray that you would be rooted and grounded in love, that you would come to know the depth and the height and the width and the breadth of this love that surpasses knowing. So it must be revealed. And so then we, that was last week, this week, we have this story of Jesus and the voice from heaven. This is my beloved with whom I, with whom I am well pleased. Now it's interesting. It's Matthew's gospel. Both Mark and Luke change the words ever so slightly. 
You are my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. Both Mark and Luke say it that way. Now, some people get tied up around their own axle because they want every word to be perfect, right? So, you know, they go, well, what the voice really say? And I, I think that misses the whole point. I think it's wonderful in many stories to imagine their dimensions. And so, so what did it mean to Jesus? You are my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. Did he need that? Now, far be it for me to psychoanalyze Jesus. <laughs> and what we have is this story. And beyond this story, after this moment, this launches Jesus' career. He goes from this moment straight into the wilderness to face the prince of darkness, the devil himself, and a face-to-face -face confrontation. And that says a lot to us. This affirmation, you are my beloved, launches him. I think it's, it's, it's worth noting that the darkness Jesus faced was outside of him. For the rest of humanity, the darkness we'll face will be within us. It's out there too, but there's also a darkness in us we must face. And I would argue that we cannot face it without knowing we are God's beloved. Only to the extent that we know we are God's beloved can we look our darkness in the face and begin to allow the light to cast it out. But that becomes the great challenge. And it makes me want to come down and walk among you, but if I do that, then you can't see me or hear me. So I'm not going to do that. But I, I just want to look all of us in the eyes and say, I know it's the hardest thing there is to go to our most vulnerable, intimate, private, personal place. I mean, it's not just that we won't tell one another. We won't tell ourselves. And only to the extent that I allow the light of God and the love of God to go there can I begin to let the light cast out the darkness. It's a great thing. It's a life journey to ponder and to be willing to be in my most vulnerable, my most weak, my most imperfect places. Open that door for Jesus to speak to that part of my life. You know, this is in our, this is in our prayer book. This is in our liturgy. It's actually in the confession of sin. We confess that we have sinned against you in word, thought, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. If we're not willing to be present to our whole heart, how can we love God with our whole heart? Now, I love the confession. And God forbid that we let it be a ritual that we just pass by. What would it mean to live a life of opening my whole heart so that my whole heart can love my God and not just part of me? Or not, not, not love God superficially? Of course, none of us would intend to do that, but it's too damn hard. It's too painful. And there's another piece. There's another deep piece to this. Do you believe you're worthy of God's love? So this, it, I realize it gets challenging. But there's a part of us that won't go there because we're afraid. And because we don't think we're worthy. Are you worthy of the love of God? If you go to your darkness, will you still be worthy of this God 
who loves us. Now we do something else today that's very special. We're going to baptize our associate rector, Erica Von Harn, and her husband, Alex. We're going to baptize their twins, Ellie and Max. And I want you to know, I'm looking at them, and it's hard to preach watching these two. <laughs> it is hard to stay focused. They are incredibly adorable. When we do this, it begs the question, into what and into whom are we baptizing them? Well, we're baptizing them into Christ's body, into the church, yes? We're baptizing them into Jesus, yes? We're baptizing them into God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, yes? Let me ask you something. Are they worthy of the love of God? When you see them, they just melt you. Of course. Don't, what, don't you want that for them? Don't you want them to be in the community that celebrates the God who sees us and loves us? Well, they won't be if we don't live there. If we don't live as those people, that is not the people they'll be baptized into. Not just Ellie and Max, but all of our children. After Jesus' is, yes, I agree. It's hard. It's painful. There is suffering if you choose to walk this way. There are no free rides. <laughs> After Jesus is baptized and he goes into the wilderness and faces the prince of darkness, he comes out from there and launches this incredible ministry. And he immediately welcomes everyone. Matthew's gospel is, is special about this. He goes out into all of Galilee, and he's, the one thing he says is turn around because God's kingdom is here. And then, if you, if you turn around and come be with me, then all the goodness of God he bestows on them. It says all manner of diseases, demonized, all manner of sickness, Jesus healed them. That is, he gave them God's love. And then he carries on this courageous, courageous, bold ministry. His profound belonging always being in his God. Understand, when we talk about belonging, we're talking about being a part of something bigger than ourselves. There's this primal need to belong to something that's bigger than me and to know I belong and to be able to give my life to something that's bigger than me. And that's what this whole moment is in Jesus' baptism. It's fascinating. I mean, I, I'm trying to, so far in this sermon, I'm trying to hold this to, to our story. And if we go just one step beyond it into, into modern research, it's fascinating what, what, what psychological research, what sociological research, and what brain physiology research is telling us. All of it is telling us the human person is hardwired to feel connected. And you cannot feel connected if you're not present to your deepest self. It's not possible. Don't you want Ellie and Max to have a wholehearted life? Yeah, you're, you're more careful now. <laughs> Because you know my next question is, well, if we want Ellie and Max to have a wholehearted life, don't we want ourselves to have a wholehearted life? Are you worthy of a wholehearted life? Are you worthy of the love of God? Are you worthy to know God loves you? Are you worthy to belong to your God. You see, Jesus, this moment in Jesus' life, 
It's an example for all of us. We're not Jesus. But we are connected to him. And he is the model for how to live human life divinely. Next week, we're going to have the story of the calling of the disciples. And I, in that sermon, I'll be able to connect these dots more specifically. But Jesus' life is a model for how we live. To be, as Paul says, to be rooted and grounded in love. To know the width and breadth and height and depth. Is to live a wholehearted life. I want you to feel uncomfortable. That's why I'm pausing so long. It's actually very intentional. Because what I'm talking about is uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable to go to the private places. It's uncomfortable to go to the places where we feel vulnerable and imperfect and stumbling. And it's the way to live a wholehearted, great, blessed, joy-filled life full of light. Because we dared to invite the light into all the truth of me. Are you worthy? Are you worthy? Are Max and Ellie worthy? If they are worthy, how could you not be worthy? Amen. 